Good morning, this is Deb Watson and today we're going to create a complete palette using three primary colors. The colors I'll be demonstrating are quinacridone red, lemon yellow, and cobalt blue. And we're going to make a palette you can paint anything in the world with. I did a piece of paper 7 by 11 that has the same number of spaces as this little palette. Next I'm going to take a Sharpie marker and put a line of black right down through here. So I'm going to put the quinacridone red in here, the lemon yellow goes in, one, two, three, four, five, this one, and the cobalt blue goes in here. Okay, now people are saying, well, I feel cheated. I don't have enough colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix some of our own colors. I'm going to use some toothpicks. You can use a palette knife, but I imagine everyone has toothpicks. First, I'm going to mix maybe half blue and half red. These three colors are very similar in strength, but I don't know if I'll get a real purple. Let's just see what we get. Here's a piece of scrap paper we can even test it on, so you can see even before we do our little color chart. That's a pretty nice purple. Now I'm going to mix half blue and half yellow with another toothpick and create my own green. I think most of you know how to make the secondary colors. That is mixing the primary so that you get orange, purple, and green. Okay, now that we have twice as many colors, So then how do you make brown? Do you have to buy a tube of brown? You could. You could add burnt sienna to this mix. But let's make our own brown. I'm going to add a little bit of blue. Fair amount of red. And some yellow. So red, yellow, and blue can make a lot of different shades, depending on how much red, how much yellow, and how much blue. Would you call that a brown? See, if you don't like this brown, you could add a little more blue to make it darker, a little more yellow to make it lighter or red to make it more of a brick red instead of a brown. Now I'm going to make a, the darkest color I can, mostly a dark gray because this is not a dark blue. So I'm adding equal amounts of red and blue and just a little bit of yellow. Now I may have to play with this mixture and add a little more here or there. Let's see if I can just get a nice dark gray. I'm using professional grade paints. These are paints made by Dick Blick Company. And before you sneer at using generic paints, 
I would do a color test. A stick blick makes very nice paint. It's still a little bit purple. I'm going to add just a tiny bit more yellow. If I like that better. Oh, now we're back to brown. I'm going to add a little bit more blue. So I'm trying to balance all three colors to get the darkest, most neutral value I can. And I think that's probably going to be it. So it's obviously not a black, but it's a medium dark gray. And I'm going to label that. My dark gray. Uh, this was our brown that we mixed. This is our orange. This is our green. This is our purple. And that leaves two extra wells in case we want to mix another variation. So now I'm going to make a little color sample so I can see exactly what I've got. If you ever have trouble getting the lids off of your paint, you can run them under hot water. And generally that will make them much easier to open. Now I have a plastic tub filled with water and inside of it I have a little jar filled with water. That way I can have clean and dirty water. So here's our dark gray, still a little bit purple. And I'm going to add water so I can get lighter so that I can see what it looks like when it's dark and light. Here's our brown. I'm painting the thickest part of the paint over this black line so that I can see how opaque or transparent this is. Quinacridone Red goes by a lot of different names. I think it's sold under two or three hundred different names. So you may very well have some in your palette under a different name and not even know it. Here's our orange. Our yellow. This yellow is only semi-opaque, but it seems to blend very well. The thing to watch out for in your lighter colors is to check and make sure that they don't contain white. And you can check that on the, usually on the side of the tube, it will list the pigments. So if it says PW and a number, that means pigment white. And I would avoid that at all cost. Here's our cobalt blue. And last are purple. You can see just using three colors we immediately change to a full color palette. All 
all of these blends are acceptable. They're going to work quite well. So if you want to start with three colors, you don't have to feel cheated. You can make all of your other secondary colors and neutral blends.